Hello and welcome to another exciting um, read aloud. I am your lovely host, Miss Disney. And today's reading, we are going to be reading another a, ta- a Twisted Tale anthology. And in this anthology, we are going to be reading A New Dawn. What if Mufasa gave up his throne by Pharaoh Rochin? And again, if I mispronounce it, I am so sorry. The morning sun crept up on the horizon like a panther on the hunt, stealthily advancing across the pride lands and the jagged rock formations that lined its borders. Pride rock boldly lorded over the vast terrain. As the highest point of the savanna, it was the only place for the king of this African land to preside. Simba prowled along the edge of the towering rock, his attention focused on the area still smoldering from a recent brush fire. He stopped and sniffed the air. Nothing but ash. Just because he didn't smell anything out of the ordinary didn't mean trouble wasn't lurking. Simba had sensed it for days. First there was the mysterious illness that took out a family of aardvarks the week before, and then the previous night Simba got word that a colony of flamingos had been attacked. Something told him that both were intentional and only the beginning. There had been talk of a group of lions who had been cast out of their prides and banded together to form their own. They called themselves the Wasaki, the evil ones. Any pride that proudly claimed such a label had only one thing in mind, destruction. The marauding group had hit several prides in the past few months. From what Simba had gathered, the Wasaki swooped in and violently overtook their targets. They pillaged all the resources and desecrated the land before moving on. It was his job to ensure Pride Rock would not become the Wasaki's next victim. Kume, Simba called. The lioness ran to his side. Make your way to the southern border where the collection of baobab trees shields the land. Stand guard there until I send someone to relieve you. Don't take your eyes off that large boulder just beyond the trees. If we are being targeted, that will be the attacker's approach. He was sure of it. The lioness gracefully bowed her head before taking off at a brisk clip down the side of Pride Rock. Simba turned to the three remaining lionesses who had gathered with him on the edge of the outcropping. He issued orders and breathed a sigh of relief as each. Even Tandy and Oli heeded his command without question. It had been two years since he technically taken over as the leader of the pride, but he still found himself wanting to de- defer to the elder lionesses. They were his parents' co- contemporaries, and it felt strange to order them around. But it was the role he held. Well, at least he was supposed to hold that role. Some of the residents of Pride Rock still saw him as a wet-behind-the-ears cub, one resident in particular. You seem busy today. Speak of the... Simba turned and stood up straight. Hello, father, he said to Mufasa. Simba tried not to wince as he observed his father gingerly making his way toward him. His steps were measured, careful. Even with the brace Rafiki had fashioned for him, Mufasa moved extremely slowly. His pain was evident, his face often contorting with discomfort. It had been nothing short of a miracle that his father had survived the fall after Simba's uncle Scar had pitched him into a mass of stampeding wildebeest. He'd lived, but the incident had left his body badly broken. There were some days when Mufasa could not make it out of the alcove where he and Simba's mother, Sarabi, spent most of their time. You sent Kuume to the southern edge of the Pride Lands, Mufasa said. Why? Because I need her to stand guard there. His father laughed dismissively. For what, Simba? For protection, Simba answered. Nala heard whispers while out on a hunt. She believes an attack is imminent, and I believe her. Nala tells fanciful stories. She always has. Don't you remember when you two were cubs? You would both make up wild tales. We are no longer cubs, father. Nala has grown into one of our most efficient huntresses. Who do you think brought in those gazelles that fed the pride this week? I won't question her. I know you are hesitant to question Nala, my son. 
She has been a good friend to you and a decent huntress, but neither of you have enough experience in running a pride to know if an attack is imminent. You cannot base such decisions on whispers one hears around the watering hole. Simba swallowed down his frustration. Arguing would do him no good. The disagreement had been going on for the past two years. Ever since his mother had convinced his father to abdicate the throne, soon after the incident with Scar, it had become obvious to everyone on Pride Rock that Mufasa's injuries would not allow him to continue performing his duties as leader of the Pride. But his father had a hard time letting go, and for two years, Simba had to deal with Mufasa second-guessing every decision he made. This isn't only about what Nala reported, Simba said. We haven't had to deal with another pride trying to overtake our lands for the better part of a year. You know better than anyone that we are well overdue for an attack. It was one thing to be declared king, but it was another thing entirely to maintain that status. There were lions all over this land waiting for their opportunity to take over Pride Rock. They had to remain vigilant at all times, but Simba's instincts told him they must be even more so lately. An attack was on the horizon. He could feel it. Trust me on this, father, Simba told him. You taught me to rely on my instincts. They taught me that Pride Rock is in danger. I have taught you well, son, but there is still much you have to learn. Simba bit his tongue to stop himself from lashing out. He'd done all he could to prove his father that he was more than capable of taking complete reign over his pride. But no matter what he did, it was never enough. Mufasa continued to treat him like a young cub, still learning how to pounce on unsuspecting zebras. Zim Simba didn't know what it would take to make him see that their pride was in good hands. Just then... Simba felt the short hairs below his mane stand on end. An uncomfortable sensation swept over him seconds before a familiar voice drawled, Well, well, if it isn't my two favorite people. Simba whip, whipped around and growled, Scar, what are you doing here? Simba hissed. Now, Simba, is that any way to greet your beloved uncle? You're no uncle of mine, he snapped. Simba? Mufasa said in a warning tone, We've been over this. Yes, we have, Scar muttered. And if I must say, it has become rather tiring. I've apologized to my dear brother for our little misunderstanding. And he's forgiven me. Don't you think it's time you did as well? Scar sauntered toward Mufasa, his tail brushing back and forth along the ground. He whipped a cloud of dirt onto Mufasa's paws as he came alongside him. Oh, oh, pardon me, brother, Scar said. Simba's eyes narrowed. It had been months since Scar last visited Pride Rock. He'd spent the past two years dropping in for a few weeks at a time, then leaving without so much as a goodbye. Simba remained wary of his dubious comings and goings. When it came to his uncle, he was suspicious about everything he did, everything he said. Why couldn't his father see that Scar was never to be trusted? Mufasa's decision to forgive Scar after the incident that had almost killed him was another ongoing issue between Simba and his father. Mufasa believed Scar's excuse that he'd been trying to help him as he dangled off the side of the cliff had, but had lost his grip. A lie. Simba had been there. He'd witnessed the hatred and jealousy in Scar's eyes as he stood above the gorge. He still saw that hatred on those occasions when Scar allowed his mask to slip. That his father had taken Scar at his word continued to confound Simba. Then again, his father had always had a blind spot when it came to seeing the evil in his brother. Simba did it. He saw his uncle for what he was which was why he never let his guard down around Scar. Come, brother, Scar said. Why don't we go down to the watering hole? No. Both his father and Scar turned in astonishment at Simba's exclamation. It's just the watering hole, Scar drawled. What do you think I am going to do, try to drown my brother? That's exactly what I think you would do, Simba bit out between clenched teeth. There's always dozens of animals around. Don't worry, Simba. If I ever thought of who harming Mufasa, 
which I wouldn't, Scar said in a saturnine smile. The last place I would consider doing it is at the watering hole. Too many witnesses. Simba's paws flared with the innate urge to pounce. He managed to curb it, but only slightly. I've told you a million times, Simba. Things are good between me and Scar, his father said. You have no need to worry. The two turned and started in the direction of the watering hole. As he watched his father and uncle walk away, Simba could not shake the troubling feeling that something was amiss. If, I were up to, if it were up to Simba, Scar would never set foot on Pride Rock again. And the thing was, the decision should be up to him. As the leader of the Pride Lands, Simba was supposed to decide who resided there and who didn't. He was supposed to be in charge of what the Pride did to protect their land and when they decided to hunt and where. But that's not the way things had worked over the past two years, and Simba wasn't sure how much longer he could take it. He couldn't be half in, half out of such major responsibilities. He knew this would all come to a head sooner or later, and it seemed as if he was on the precipices of having to make a decision he was loath to make. Either Mufasa would be the leader or Simba, but there could only be one. The thought of breaking off from the pride was something that had floated across Simba's mind numerous times the past year, but it felt like a betrayal even thinking about it. He knew in his heart that his father could not lead the pride anymore, and if Simba were to abdicate and leave, the pride would be more vulnerable to attack than they'd ever been before. But his father was making it impossible for Simba to stay. The way he continued to undermine Simba's decisions also made the pride more vulnerable. It confused the others, forcing them to choose whose words they should listen to. If Mufasa insisted on interfering with Simba's leadership, it would not end well for anyone. Simba? Simba? He turned at the sound of the familiar voice. Moments later, Nala appeared from one of from around one of the boulders. Simba's heart gave a little stutter step, but he quickly shut down any inkling of affection. He did not want anyone to think his feelings for her had anything to do with how he was running the pride. He turned and affected his sternness face. Yes, Nala? She stepped back and let out a soft laugh. Why so glum, Mr. Sirius? I have a lot of work to do, Simba said. She rolled her eyes. Yes, yes, I know. You're the leader of the pride. She sent a cloud of dust sailing up around his feet. I don't care that you're king. Stop being so full of yourself. Simba allowed himself a small laugh, but he, co he couldn't maintain his stoic countenance around her. Fine, what is it that you want? Actually, this is pretty serious, she said. Duma just came back from a hunt. She said that the berm on the southwestern side of the pride land was breached overnight. Simba froze a rush of unease slithering down his spine. Is she sure? Nala nodded. I went out to see it for myself before coming to you, just to be sure. It was trampled, and not by elephants or antelope. They are lion tracks, and it wouldn't be anyone from our tribe because you specifically told everyone to avoid that area. Are you certain my father didn't come behind me and tell them that they could? Simba asked with a derisive snort. Nala walked up to him and placed her right paw on his back. I know things are uncomfortable between you and Mufasa. Just give him some time. It's been two years, Simba pointed out. How much time am I supposed to give him? However long it takes, Nala said. She gave him a knock on the back of the head. Now, enough with the pity party. Do you want to check out what's happening at the berm or what? Rubbing his head where she not clocked him, Simba turned to her and said, show me.